In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can get the first day and the last day from a month, and not just the current month, but maybe a month afterwards or a month before. I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So we've got here a date time two. It could be a date, it could be date time offset, it could be a small date time, it could be anything. So I want the first day of the month. And I can do that quite easily by using date from parts. So date from parts takes three parameters, the year, the month, and the day. So I want the year of my variable, I want the month of my variable, and I want the first day. So that will get me the first day of the month. Now suppose I wanted not just the first day of this month, but the first day of the next month. Well, one possible solution would be just to add one to the month. However, I don't recommend that even though it's worked in this particular example, because if I change what we've got now to December, then we'll have an overflow error because there isn't a 13th month. Now, a lot of languages would accept a 13th month and then it would be January 2008, but not SQL. So back to the drawing board. Instead, what we can do is use the function date add. Now have a look at my video date add if you haven't seen that before, but I'm going to add a month to my answer. So here is my answer of the first day of the month, and now I will add one month. And similarly, I can subtract one month still using date add. Right, so that is how we can get the first day of a month or the first day of the current month, the month after, month before, five months after. What about the last day of the month? Well, we could use a similar thing, but then we would have to know how many days there are in a particular month. So April 30 days, May 31 and so on. Instead, what we can use is E or end of month. So that's just one word. So E or month. And all I need in here is my date. So this will give me the current end of this month. But what if I wanted the end of the next month? Well, could I use date add? So I can add a month to it. And the answer, well, that'll get me the 30th of May, not the 31st. Okay, so maybe I can add a month to my variable. So my variable here is the 3rd of April. I'll add a month to that, make it the 3rd of May, and then take the end of the month. And that will work. Now, will that work if I have the 31st of May? After all, there is no 31st of June. What will happen? And the answer is, it's fine. It will keep it in June. But there is a simpler way. Instead, what I can do is go back to my basic EO month, which gives me the end of this month. So I will take it back to the 3rd of April. And then I can use the optional second parameter to add a month to it, or take a month away, or add five months if it's always, or find out what the end of the month is going to be next year. Quite useful, perhaps, if you have got a February. So how many days does April have? Well, that's easy to find out. We take the end of the month and we take the day of that date. So there are 30 days in April. So we can use E or month to get to the end of the month. Sadly, there isn't an S or month. There isn't a start of month. Instead, what we can do is use date from parts and get the year of our date, the month of our date, and then the first day. And then if we want to go forward or backwards, we can use date add. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.